This is your Weekend Barbie This Today Evening News Update for Friday, December 10. No significant side effects have been found in an analysis of adverse events reported by persons who have taken the COVID-19 vaccines in Barbados. The findings of the study conducted between February and September this year were revealed last night at a virtual forum entitled Pharma Vigilance monitoring the safety of the COVID-19 vaccines in Barbados, which was sponsored by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Inter-American Development Bank. The analysis was conducted by independent researcher Shatur Bob. In AstraZeneca vaccine, um, you had 487 adverse events reported, which the percentage of adverse events reported um, for the overall dosage of AstraZeneca vaccine administered was less than 1%. Likewise, um, for Pfizer, you only had six adverse events reported. Now, um, the Pfizer vaccine was introduced um, much later, and that may account for um, some of um, the differences in, in that we're seeing here or the data looking biased towards you having greater adverse events reported for AstraZeneca, likewise for Sinopharm. But we see that also um, when we look at the proportion of adverse events reported or the percentage of adverse re events reported after the Pfizer and Sinopharm vaccines, it is also less than 1%. In other news this Friday, the body of 41-year-old Romel Tyson Jones of First Avenue Deans Village, Hinesbury Road, St. Michael, was discovered at Three Houses River, St. Philip, today. Police Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Roddy Innes updated reporters at the scene. Police were notified via telephone call at the District C Police Station about 7.55 a.m. this morning being Friday the 10th of December 2021. We responded to the scene and we confirmed the discovery. An unnatural death investigation has been launched. Um, at this stage, we are appealing for information regarding this matter. Anyone who might have witnessed or have any knowledge of this incident is asked to contact the District C Police Station at 416-8200 or 416-8204. They can also contact the Oysters Police Station at 418-2612 or 418-2610 or any police station for that matter. The Democratic Labour Party is calling on the Mia Motley administration to reinstate the quarantine period for all travellers, vaccinated and unvaccinated, in light of the Omicron variant that is spreading across the globe. DLP spokesman on health Andrea Worrell says government is taking a serious risk by doing nothing to increase the surveillance at the borders. The Democratic Labour Party calls on the Mayor Motley administration to protect Barbadians by enhancing travel protocols by reinstating the quarantine period for all travellers, vaccinated and unvaccinated. We already know that the Omicron variant of concern is capable of infected persons who are vaccinated. Why take the risk by doing nothing to increase the surveillance at our borders? A quarantine period with testing after quarantine should be reinstated for all arriving passengers. Worrell is also concerned about ongoing strike action by nurses represented by the Unity Workers Union, despite talks with Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick. The DLP spokesperson says the situation needs to be resolved immediately. The Barbados Light and Power has already begun preparing for the 2022 hurricane season. This was revealed today during a press conference by Director of Operations, Johan Graves. He explained the organization was significantly impacted by the storms last year and so it has already started work to order backup equipment in anticipation of next year. Effectively, we have already started um, preparations for next year's hurricane season already. Um, recognizing, as you said, how, how active it was. Also because there's COVID still lingering around and also because of the shipping delays um, that we have been seeing going around the world. Um, as you would recognize or appreciate, a lot of the equipment and um, uh, components that we use are very specialized and therefore it takes us a while to get them. Um, so we've already initiated um, basically what we consider as our hurricane orders 
for next year uh, to ensure that we can have them in our store house um, as early as possible next year ahead of the entire season. Graves also revealed that the BLMP had already made significant headway with telecommunication providers to clean up overcrowded poles, which he says was a major factor in weakening the power company's infrastructure to withstand the storms. Over the last few years, and I know you would have been aware that the telecoms would have transitioned from um, copper um, cables um, to fiber, on, um, so currently there are both copper cables and fiber cables um, on our poles right now. Um, and you will, we will see um, the announcements by the telecoms recently that they are now fully onto fiber and they are now, now using the copper cables. So what is going on right now is that they are removing those copper cables from our, for our lines, or for our poles, sorry. What that means, it will remove the bumper loading, the bumper load that is on our poles, and it also will make the poles a lot tidier going forward. So we've been working closely with them. They've started their effort in terms of removing those old cables, and we've been going behind and auditing and um, having them address any issues that we, we, we um, see. Environment Minister Adrian Ford is imploring Barbadians to give the gift of a tree this Christmas. Speaking at the final clean and green launch for the year, Ford said that over the holiday period, over 59 million trees are cut down to be used as ornaments, which contribute to deforestation. In an effort to reduce their carbon footprint, Ford says each Barbadian should replant a tree over the holidays. And I'm calling on you all to give the gift, the gift of a tree for Christmas. For every single tree, those natural trees that we cut down and we put in our homes, I am employing Barbados to go there, buy a tree, even come to NCC and get one as part of the tree planting million dollar million dream that we have. Give me a tree as a gift for Christmas. That is my simple plea to Barbados. It will help me place those trees that are cut down worldwide that see to do their job by removing that powerful carbon dioxide. It is a simple plea for you as minister, the gift of your tree. And I'm sure that that gift would be appreciated by one and all. COVID-19 related deaths have now reached 249. A total of 103 people, 46 males and 57 females, were diagnosed with COVID-19 on Thursday from among the 1,292 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. The new cases comprise 19 persons who are under the age of 18 and 84 who are 18 years and older. The number of persons in isolation facilities was 296, while 1,866 were in home isolation. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 139,285, which is 51.4% of the total population or 61% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable and the eldest she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends i take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities and i love my mum, and i would not want for anything to happen to her i am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab when you have the vaccine you have a weapon to fight against this virus to fight against this beast 95 percent of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living Regional news now, Farley Chavez Augustine has been sworn in as the Tobago House of Assembly's fifth chief secretary. Augustine, who is the deputy political leader of the Progressive Democrat Patriots, along with political leader Watson Duke, led the team to a 14-1 victory on Monday night against the PNM. We get the details from TCT News. 
President Paula May Weeks, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley and Chief Justice Ivo Archie were present for the day's proceedings. On Thursday morning, the 15 elected area representatives were delivered their oaths of office in a short ceremony at the Magdalena Grand Beach Resort, following which was the business of appointing the other members of the Assembly. The pick for presiding officer was defeated PDP candidate for Darrell Spring Wim, Abby Taylor. We have found favor in Valley Shower Capacity to be appointed as the next Chief Secretary of this Labour of Since there are no other nominations, <laughs> I now declare Mr. Farley Chavez of a state, duly elected by acclamation Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. On the international scene, the U.S. Supreme Court on Friday allowed abortion providers to pursue a legal challenge to a ban on most abortions in Texas, but has left the nation's strictest abortion law in place, with the fate of the Republican-backed measure that allows private citizens to enforce it still hanging in the balance. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. The Texas measure, which is the most restrictive abortion law in the nation, bans abortions at around six weeks a point in time when many women do not yet realize they are pregnant and has no exception for pregnancies resulting from rape or incest. It also enables private citizens to sue anyone who performs or assists a woman in getting an abortion after cardiac activity is detected in the embryo. Individuals can then be awarded a minimum of $10,000 for bringing successful lawsuits under the law. That feature made it more difficult to directly sue the state to challenge the law's legality helping shield the measure from being immediately blocked. Chief Justice John Roberts criticized the Texas law as specifically designed to nullify the Supreme Court's precedence on abortion, writing, quote, It is the role of the Supreme Court in our constitutional system that is at stake. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.